everybody out there. Welcome back to the channel. We are uh, driving through Chicago right now. We've got a delivery here at Hammond. This place right here, guys, is kind of a kind of worries me a little bit with how this parking lot is. No, that's not going to be a rant video. Just look at how tight this parking lot is. Uh, it's they they have so many trucks come in. Uh, but this parking lot really can only accommodate a few at a time, but there's like 10 of us in here. So you got this guy here, uh, he's going to have to move so I can, so I can even get out once they call me to a door. And then I don't know where the guy in that white freight liner is going to go. Um, yeah, <laughs> really tight, really tight. Where's he going? And then you got the guy next to me right there. He just came in. You can see trucks are coming in through right there between that truck and my hood. And as you can tell, there's not that much space between my hood and that truck. And trucks are still coming in through there. Now, where's this guy going to go? And every time a truck comes in through that little gap right there, my heart skips a beat. Yeah, see the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once we, once they do call us, I'm not going to, you know, I don't even know how we're going to juggle trucks around so that other trucks can get out because now that guy's going to have to, that guy's going to have to get out or he's going to have to move. But yeah, I'm just waiting to get, like I said, get a phone call to go back into the door. Uh, but yeah, I'm at uh, Pack something or other. What's it called? Packmore in Hammond, Indiana. Nice people. I mean, they're really nice folks in there. Um, but it's just like they just kind of overbook their days. Wait, like I said, they need to make a bigger parking lot or something to accommodate this much truck traffic in here. But I guess business is doing good for them, huh? All right, well now they called us into a door. I just got to wait that to ask that guy there to move out of my way for me. There's a truck that's pulling out of that door. Yeah, like I said, they don't really give you enough room in this parking lot. Now, I, if you can see over there where that the nose of that truck is sticking out of the building, that's the door I'm going into. But I'm not sure how I'm going to that white Volvo right there against the building. I read reviews before I came here and they did say this is a pretty tight, pretty tight cornering, pretty tight backing. See now I don't know, the guy is getting in that Volvo, but I don't know where, oh okay that guy's just getting into his truck now in the door. That guy in that Volvo, he's got really nowhere to go. See, now if that Volvo goes anywhere, he's going to block my door. Now that guy's finally pulling out. This is a really poorly designed parking lot. Maybe when they built this place, they didn't have as much, uh, as much traffic coming in and out of here as they do now. But I think they should probably invest in expanding a little bit. Granted, we're in Hammond, Indiana. There's not exactly a whole lot of real estate for them to expand upon, but Yes, sir. I'm. Oh, I'm. I'm going for that that Dayton freight the truck. Pull out right now. Yeah, they got pulled out right now. <laughs> I figure it's all right. I'll, I'll try to get out of your way as soon as I can. <laughs> that was the guy that I asked to move for me earlier. Now he's been called to a door. And now I'm in his way, waiting for the guy to get out of my door. This is going to be fun. I. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really, I'm really not sure how this is going to work. Because I can't even turn around right here. I really just need that Volvo gone. What the hell? Oh, that scared me. A forklift went onto that truck next to me, and I thought I hit something. I know on the phone it doesn't do it justice. You, you really can't tell how tight it really is. 
but it's tight. It is real tight. Here we go. So now I gotta watch on my passenger side. There's that yellow guardrail that is blocking a fire hydrant, and that makes it that much harder. Because I'm gonna need all this space. In fact, what I might have to do is back into the cars. Actually cut it too short. progress what is this oh my gosh what are you doing right there dude there's a truck that just about hit me on the passenger side I don't know what he wants from me here it's really a good idea when you're uh, in a tight quarter like this don't crowd the driver that's trying to back into the tightest dock in the parking lot. Doesn't look good on you. Yeah, you'll see how close he is here in a second. He didn't have to get that close. He just got it right up there for no reason. See, look at that. Look at the nose of his truck. Right there. No reason for that. He saw that I was backing into this dock. Anyway, enough of that. I can't even see into the dock right now. It's so dark. I'm getting a workout on my clutch leg. I'll tell you what. I really feel like I'm backing in blind here. I really can't see a darn thing. I gotta go back here and get the doors open. Oh yeah, she's tight. Wow, well, guys, so I'm here in Webster City, Iowa. I just got here to unload. Can you hear that wind? And the phone rocking is because the truck is rocking. But the wind out there is so crazy that that metal cage deal right there for, the, um, for their totes, the one right next to my truck, it was sitting clear up there on top of those stacks and I was in the sleeper and I heard a loud crash came out to see this <laughs> it the wind blew it clear off the top of that stack all the way over there and it landed right there a little too close to comfort if you ask me to my truck so yeah we're seeing what else blows off but this wind has been so bad I was driving straight into it and I was at about a half a tank when I started into the wind 
And typically from a half a tank to a quarter tank, I can go about 350 miles. Pretty common, but this wind was so bad and it was such a strong headwind that uh, yeah, it went down to a quarter of a tank in both tanks uh, within 130 miles. So I lost what normally would be a 350 mile you know, distance was about 130. And my, the whole time, just to maintain even 60 miles an hour, my boost was pegging out. I mean, it was crazy, crazy windy today. You know, luckily my pyro stayed pretty decent. It didn't get above 800 degrees, which is surprising as hard as I was pushing the boost. But, uh, yeah. It's a little windy out there today. Now that, it, <clears throat> that entire stack right there just blew clear over. And look, this is a little, a uh, little bit unnerving. They aren't that far from uh, making it to my truck if they blow in the right, the right direction. Yeah. Man, honestly, that wind gust, I, I, I was in the sleeper and I felt that wind. And the wind was so bad that I actually, like I was standing up in the sleeper and I actually had to brace myself while I was standing up. Split second went through my head, and I'm like, is the truck gonna blow over now? It's a little bit, a little bit, a little daunting, a little daunting. That entire stack, just, I mean, you can just see, I mean, they're all, all over. And then they blew down right there. Still moving. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, the worst of it's over. I sure hope those uh, totes right there, they're full with hazmat. So hopefully they're heavy enough that they're not gonna blow over. But they have a little more, a little more surface area for the wind to grab a hold of too. So I hope it doesn't, uh, I hope it doesn't balance out, you know, more surface area, it's heavier, but more surface area for the wind. All right, guys, well, we are done getting unloaded. We're heading to the next delivery. But I got to tell you, that wind out there is making me a little concerned because I got 40 miles to go. And that wind that blew over all those stacks of uh, those cages, those crates, that's going to be broadsiding me for the entire 40 miles. So I'm empty, which is the last thing you want to be in wind like this. But we'll see. I mean, like I said, on the way over here, I was driving into the wind the whole time. And it was so strong, I could darn near watch the gas or the, the fuel gauges just lower and lower and lower. I've never, I've never used that much fuel in that short amount of time, ever. You know, when you think of this area, you think that you're going to get better fuel mileage out here than you would somewhere in like Pennsylvania, somewhere that's hilly and, you know, mountainous and whatnot. You think you're going to get better fuel mileage in an area like this. But one thing you got to consider when you're out here is there's nothing to stop the wind. So you are dealing with wind on days like today, nonstop. Whereas when you're driving through somewhere like Pennsylvania, you know, you've got the occasional uphill, but then you got the downhill on the other side where the truck doesn't have to do anything except roll. You know, and so it's just uh, more of a give and take in Pennsylvania. But out here, it's all take. The wind just takes all your fuel mileage. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, that typically in that... In, this, in that amount of fuel that I just, that I used, I typically get about 350 miles in that span. Today I got 130 out of that same amount of fuel. That's how hard the truck was working to get through that wind. And I only had 8,000 pounds. to uh, open the hood and just while I was sitting there and just 
kind of do a mid-trip inspection, check the oil, all that stuff, you know. But it was so windy, I, I was afraid, you know, I was afraid to open my hood. It was that windy. I was afraid of what it would do to the hinges. I was afraid of how hard it would be to get the hood closed again without it getting hung up again. It's just insane. I don't, I, the wind is my least favorite thing out here as far as like the weather goes. I can't stand the wind. Alright, here's a good little lesson. Never stop on the tracks. Of course, I wish that was a light. It's kind of hard to go. We're going to go. As you can see, these. There's not enough space between the tracks and the stop sign to stop, so. You just got to go. I actually watched a guy in a situation just like that one time get stuck on the railroad tracks trying to turn left onto a four lane road. And uh, he couldn't get out on the road, there's too much traffic and a train came by, he just wiped his trailer out. He was like two trucks ahead of me. It was a distribution center, I want to say it was Piggly Wiggly or something like that. It was down there in like Black Mountain, North Carolina. Some of you guys might know where I'm talking about. He come out of the place and uh, he got a Cross some railroad tracks to you know go in and out. Yeah, like I said, I was in line to get out, uh, only a couple trucks behind him, and here, here came the train. Luckily, he was all right. He was a uh, he didn't get hurt at all. Say a few prayers for me that my truck, that the next video clip you see isn't of me walking around my truck on its side. Just, just, just pray that the next video clip that you see is me checking into the, uh, the uh, chipper. Yeah. All right, guys, we made it through the wind. Right. Couple uh, questionable gusts, but we got her. on the building so all right so yeah there's a sign right there it says 520 all right we're in the wrong one here I gotta go and to sit it's the same building but uh, it's divided by by uh, by some grass so I'll have to go 
out of the way for these guys now. That's fun. See, I mean, yeah, some people are going to say, well, but it's not the same name as uh, what you said you're going to. And you're right. It's not the same name. But something you'll learn out here is a lot of times you'll go to a warehouse and it won't be the, it won't be the name of what's on the Raycon. It'll be uh, something completely different. You know, maybe they got bought out and it just never changed in the database for the broker. You know, something like that. So it's not really uncommon to go somewhere and have the name be different than what it says on the Raycon. So it can be kind of confusing when the numbers are not visible. Alright, I don't know what the guy in that trailer to the right's doing. He's blocking the exit. I would say this guy in this Volvo is trying to back into a door, but what is he doing? Uh, this... I don't know what he's doing. Now I'm in this Kenworth way. Oh, this was a real fun idea pulling into this parking lot. What is this Volvo doing? Come on, bud, make up your mind. What is he doing? He's just sitting there blocking the exit. Golly, there he goes. Maybe not. Try. Oh my lord. He's blocking the exit again. Really, dude? I just had to back in, or I just had to accidentally go into that parking lot, didn't I? Well, that doesn't say. Is that at least 500, though? Oh, I guess I could have gone over. I don't know. What the heck? Okay, so that's 500 GXO. Wow, okay, come on. Well, this is kind of silly. But yeah, this is 500, this is where I'm supposed to be. Here. Well, that's the kind of thing that would have been beneficial to put on a sign outside. Yeah. All right, so you know how pretty much any time you go somewhere on the from the load board, the majority of the time you've probably never been there. Uh, so you don't know what they're, what they do, how they operate, things like that. And uh, that's why it's very, very helpful when you go places that have signs explaining to the drivers what they have to do, where they have to go, all that stuff, where they should park the truck. Anyways, I walked up to that guy I saw sitting out here and asked him where I needed to check in. And he just kind of angrily pointed towards the door and uh and then he looks at me and goes is that your truck I'm like yep that's uh, that's my truck that you're talking about the peterbilt over there that's my truck and he goes next time you come here park on the street i'm like that's a little odd i said uh and i told the guy i said well the only reason i didn't do it this time is because you don't park on the street anywhere hardly Unless there's signs that specifically tell the drivers, hey, park on the street and walk in and check in. But who thinks to just park on the street to go check in somewhere when there's a giant parking lot affiliated with that with that uh, with that business? You know what I mean? <sighs> so, like I said, it's very beneficial to have signs, but not everybody does. Like I said, I like I like signs. I like having things explained to me clearly. Alright. I'm getting all ready for our trip to Cancun. Put a nice fresh little air freshener in here. Smells like we're on vacation already. That's right. Okay, well to be fair, now there's trucks parked all along 
the curb. Uh, I don't see signs anywhere. I didn't see a single sign anywhere saying to do that. Um, but when I got here, there wasn't... Uh, I think there may have been one truck along the curb, but way over there. Like, way over there. Like, uh, behind where that teal, uh, teal truck is. It was way back there for a different business. So, eh, you know, live and learn, I guess. But apparently these guys all know you're supposed to park there, so. <laughs> uh, like I said, I didn't see a sign anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere. But maybe these guys have been here before. Uh, hard, hard to believe that all of them have, but maybe a couple of them, the first couple were, and then the rest followed suit. But there weren't any for me to follow when I got here. But I'm just making excuses and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But yeah, I didn't, uh, there wasn't anything there when I got here. I'll have to look when I leave if there's a, see if there's a sign anywhere saying trucks park in the street. It's a pretty day though. And I did not blow over. So uh, that's good. All right, I'm just gonna get out of this guy's way so he can back into my door. And uh, then I'll slide my tandems back forward, but we're all loaded up. I'm gonna go back here and slide my tandems now so I can make this tight turn a little easier this trailer's a little different when it comes to the sliding of the tandems on this trailer you push in a knob instead of pull it out slide them up a little bit i'm pretty light so i'm not too worried about the positioning i just like to keep them forward a little bit so well for one thing there's what's called the bridge law in most states which Basically, it just says you can only have your tandems back so far. So, it's technically illegal in most states to have your tandems all the way back. But, you also don't want to have them all the way back. That way, you can uh, make tighter turns. Just easier to drive with the tandems up a little bit, you know? I'm gonna have to back in. Oh, 
Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. This is not... Alright, gotta take... Alright, I guess I got a little bit of a ways to back. Now where I can really turn around right there. Not safely, anyway. The one parking lot area I was going to try to turn around in didn't really look like it was designed for the weight of a semi-trailer, so we're just cruising on back here. I should probably turn my flashes on. We're just cruising on back here. But yeah, where I turned back there, there wasn't a single sign that said road to close. So, um, yeah, <laughs> this is fun. Okay, I'm not the only one that's done embarrassing stuff like this. Don't pretend like I am. I'm just trying to get over here to the left here a little bit so that Subaru can go by. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's just back her on down. Like I said, don't none of you truck drivers out there pretend like you've never done stupid stuff like this. Yeah, the engine fan's on because obviously there's no air coming in through the front right now. I wasn't going to record this, but I figured you all might get a good laugh out of it. So here we be. I think I can turn around right here, though. There's a big truck entrance, which I thought about turning around in earlier, but I didn't want to have to deal with the guard, and I thought maybe there's a place up there I could back into. But there wasn't. I can only imagine what the guard is thinking at this Barilla plant. It ain't the fact you made a mistake, it's how you get out of that mistake. It's how you uh, problem solve on the drop of a hat and fix your mistake. Uh, without losing your cool, which I know you all have seen videos where I do kind of lose my cool a little bit. But the best thing to do in a situation like that back there is just to remain level headed and uh, seek out an area big enough for the truck to back into. We did her, yep, just like that. Anyway, next stop is I gotta get a little bit of fuel in this piece. All right, we are at, uh, I don't even know how you pronounce it, some travel plaza here in Tama, Iowa. Uh, the, on that sign right there. The Meskwaki, I guess. Yeah, the Meskwaki Travel Plaza. Diesel here is only 471 and that's just the flat rate. That's without a discount or anything. It's 471 so... Cool looking little travel plaza here. I'm on Route 30 right now. Sorry for the wind. It's bad. see if uh, we can fill this up uh, before the pump shuts off automatically. These pumps shut off automatically at just under a thousand dollars. So let's see if we do it for less than a thousand bucks. It's a good sign. That one just shut off already. Just waiting for the other one to shut off. 
By the way, that's the only damage uh, from the beer. Right here. A little crease. That's it. Nice. 208. Just under a grand. Right out of my pocket. Appreciate that, Joe. I'm going to have to throw a little bit of oil in her. Here's the new connections we put on. One right there. And then you can't really see them, but they're down there on the starter. There's a new one on the starter there. Alright, we are good on oil now. Alright, we're good there. Put the cap back on. I kind of spilled a little bit. <laughs> Oops. Good thing that's not a leak. That'd be a hell of a leak right there. Yeah. All right, guys. It's the next morning, and it is freezing outside right now. I mean, it's like 28 degrees or so now oh, it says 30 on here but roughly 28 or so outside right now but the wind is ungodly strong but the the positive is that the wind is behind us so you know this bad boy might get a whopping six and a half miles per gallon now <laughs> so yeah we're not going against the wind anymore i got my lovely coffee right here Feeling pretty good this morning. And yeah, now it's all that's left is we got about 495 miles to go. Uh, till we get, like I said, we're going to New Baltimore, Michigan, which is just north of Detroit. We're going to the Kroger's up there. I don't think I've ever been to that Kroger's. I've been to a lot of Kroger's in the, you know, in that region. But I don't think I've been to that one. So I, the one Kroger's though that I will never go to, not with this truck anyway, and it's because of this truck, because they're not really that bad at people there, but the Kroger's I won't go to is the one in Cincinnati on Milford Road. That, you know, it's like right off of Route 4. That Kroger's right there is, anybody that's ever been to that Kroger's knows how god awful tight that place is. I mean, it was hard to, it was hard to maneuver in there with my Freightliner. And, uh, it, it, you know, it's really bad. And, if, and, and that's if you're lucky enough to get the top level uh, dot or the top level warehouse, because there's two different warehouses there. Uh, there's the old one and there's the slightly newer one. Um, if you get the old warehouse with this truck, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know about that one. Uh, that's one of those times you might have to suck up your pride and ask the yard jockey to put it in there for you because you drop it in the door anyway there you don't stay hooked up you drop it and then you bobtail back out to the staging area um, but it's so tight you know it's it just yeah I, I remember having to get into that dock before and I did it with a short nose Peterbilt 379 you know one of the uh, yeah, the short nose one. And that was darn near impossible. And you couldn't, and you, and you really couldn't even do it then if there was a trailer in each door on the on either side of that, of the door you were putting yours into. So I, I just don't even want to go through the hassle of booking a logo in there because it's just, it'd just be a nightmare. But anyways, with that said, let's get on the road and start heading east. For anybody that watches my videos that aren't truck drivers and wonder what showers look like on the road, well, this is an example of a very nice one. Typically, they aren't really dressed up this nicely, but this is a pretty nice shower. I'm in uh, the TA in Morris, Illinois, 
But yeah, this is definitely one of the nicer showers I've been in on the road. But yeah, it's uh, like I said, they're not usually done up like this. Looks nice. All right, let's get cleaning and uh, so we can finish our drive. Golly, it is brutal out there, guys. It is way too cold to be almost, well, to be spring. I gotta put some stuff in the refrigerator, got some stuff for a meal later. So, but now, yeah, now like I said, we're, gonna, we're, we're all cleaned up, got the shower. Like I said, that's, you know, for those that uh, don't know what a shower looks like or what kind of showers we, we have out here on the road, they range from really crappy to um, really nice, honestly. And that one was one of the nicer ones that I've used. So um, right here, I'm in, like I said, I'm in Morris, Illinois, the TA. It's a nicer, it's kind of a nicer TA. They got a nicer restaurant in there than typical TAs. Uh, it's just a all around nicer version of a TA. Um, but uh, yeah, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and get on out of here. Um, I feel recouped or I feel refreshed. Michigan right now and these trees are really gorgeous I mean there shouldn't really be snow out right now <laughs> but it does uh, make for an amazing landscape on those trees So, uh, I'm here at the, like I said, the new Baltimore, uh, Michigan Kroger's and, uh, they have quite the system for checking in. Uh, yeah, make sure, you, uh, make sure you, you, uh, value or you get what you are worth for your time. I'll just say that. But there's a line wrapped around this building, like a line for an amusement park ride, where they just have people going and like zigzagging all around the place, and wow, it's just, it's crazy. Anyway, we'll uh, keep you updated as to how long it takes to get through all this. See, there's all these trucks here. They've come around that line of trailers right there. And then we got a line of trucks right there, and they go around this row of trailers and come back right there. Oh yeah. Yep, you can see that line right there. Like I said, then there's the same length of a line, if not longer, on the other side of these trailers right here that come back around. Like I said, it's set up like a line at an amusement park really all is the best way I can describe it it's exactly what it seems like only we ain't waiting for something fun so I'm still in line and it's been about an hour and a half so Fair warning if anybody comes here. I had a nine o'clock appointment. I got here at seven, about 7.30 I got here. And it's now 9.15. All right, it's the next morning. And we're at uh, Cooper Tire. 
Cooper Tire in Finley, Ohio. I just gotta go, I uh, just checked in with the guard. Now I gotta go check in with the shipping clerk. Yeah, one thing I'm uh, gonna have them do on this truck while it's in the shop is it needs new tie rods. They're uh, they're making a little ruckus, just a little, just a wee little bit. All right, let me can I fit through there. It's supposed to go right in there between the fence and that green trailer, the intermodal hub group. Looks like I can get in there, I guess. Oh, Here now. Oh. Be nice if they put some gravel with these potholes. Wow. Alright, so I guess it's okay to block this. He said just park right here and go in. So I guess it's alright to block this little pathway temporarily while they tell me what door to go to. Let's do it. I'm all about it. This is a lovely spring morning we're having here in Finley, Ohio. I love it. Oh, we're going to door three. They said it could take about anywhere from three to five hours. So I guess I'll get another nap in here. Maybe I'll edit this video. I guess I'll get to turn around somewhere and come back and back her in the three. Yeah, JB Hunt actually just called me. That's who the broker's through, or the, this load is through. And they just called me as I was walking back out here to open the doors. And even though I just checked in on the app when I got here, they said, yeah, just want to see if you're going to be good to be there on time. I'm like, yep, getting ready to back into a door as we speak. That's definitely one problem with these uh, hater belts. They don't exactly like to make U-turns. So let me come on down here. I will say that, however, because of their long wheelbase, it's like they don't like to make U-turns, but at the same time, they're really good at it because you can jackknife the hell out of it. And uh, you won't take out your sleeper because of that longer wheelbase. All right. Yeah, I told the broker, I'm like, I, I didn't expect it to take, you know, to possibly take five hours. I told him, I said, you know, uh, there's a chance as long as that as long as they're saying it's gonna take um, that this may not be able to get to the delivery on time tomorrow because I got 545 miles to go from here and you know it just depends on where I'm able to shut it down at um, whether or not I can get to the delivery on time so I have to be at Pet Boys in Chester New York by time by eight in the morning no seven in the morning so you have to be there by seven in the morning 545 miles that's roughly about that's a good solid nine hours of driving uh so i mean if i'm out of here you see the problem is though is that once we get into the once we're here for more than three hours it's going to start eating into my my drive time while I sit here, not just my 14 on duty time. 
So right now I've got a good, you know, almost 10 hours of drive time because it took me an hour to get here from where I was sleeping last night. Um, so there's a, you know, so there's an hour off there. So there's 10. So if I'm here for five hours, instead of 10 hours of, uh, instead of 10 hours of drive time, I'm going to have like eight of drive time. So I won't be able to get all the way up there. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have eight hours all like all together. So that'll be including stopping and you know all that stuff so but at the same time i can always do a split break i could do a three hour i could do a three seven split if i really needed to i would say i could do an eight hour sleeper and then if you do an eight hour sleeper uh then you automatically get your hours back that you had when you started the eight hour sleeper actually let me just put my my logs on sleeper just because I'm gonna be going back in the sleeper anyway, so it's not a lie. So now I've put my logs on sleeper. That way, just in case they actually do take eight hours. I don't think they will, they didn't say that, but if for some reason they do take eight hours to load me, then my clock will completely go back to where it is now. And then I'll have no problem getting there. I presented my uh, concern to the broker there at jb hunt when they called just to let them know what was going on um just in case i'm not able to get there on time tomorrow if i'm sitting here for five hours getting loaded it's going to make a a big difference on whether or not i get there on time tomorrow or not so i told him that and he said if you know if i'm going to be late just let him know i hope i'm not because i got another load i'm picking up after that that brings me back home um and then i'm done for a while a uh, week and a half or something like that. I'm probably going to just end the video here. I'm sure this is going to be a long enough video. I don't even know where I started this video. I don't know where I, where, like, you know, what, I don't know when I started. I don't know what my first clip is going to be. I got to go back through my clips and see what's going to be the start of this video. But yeah, we'll figure it out. But anyways, guys, I'm going to go, I mean, I got time to edit, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and this will probably be my last video, my last one before vacation, but we'll get it, we'll get it hit, we'll hit it hard again uh, when I get back, so you guys will have a good one out there, continue to survive to thrive, we really need to do that right now in this economy, and I hope you guys all have a good safe day out there, y'all take care.